Hi everyone, uh, my name's Adam Beck, Executive Director of the Smart Cities Council for Australia and New Zealand. Uh, this little uh, interview uh, video is, uh, is being recorded to share with you all uh, a little bit of overview and insight into the Centre for Digital Built Britain. Uh, and it's in the context of the digital twin work that we're doing as part of our task force at the Smart Cities Council. And I've got joining me, uh, joining me today, uh, Mark Enzo, who's Chief Technical Officer for Mott McDonald and very much uh, embedded within and helping shape the work of the uh, CDBB. Uh, Mark, thanks for joining us. Can I start by uh, getting you to give our, uh, give our viewers a little bit of a bio on who you are and what you do? Yeah, thanks very much. I mean, it's, it's great to make contact. I'm, I'm really grateful for this, this opportunity. So, so thanks for that. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Mark Enzer. Um, uh, as Adam mentioned, I'm the CTO at McDonald. Uh, but I think the, the key thing for uh, this little chap is um, really that I'm the head of the National Digital Twin Program for the UK, uh, which is based out of the Centre for Digital Built Britain at Cambridge. It's weird. I, I struggle with saying it. It's much easier CDBB. for me just to say, yeah, CDBB. <laughs> that's easier. Um, and uh, that, that's a, um, a collaboration between um, a department in the UK government and Cambridge University uh, to help deliver the vision for Digital Built Britain. And just, uh, just quickly, um, for those that are in front of a web browser, you can head to cdbb.cam.ac.uk. So that's sitting, uh, that's sitting within the University of Cambridge, isn't it, Mark? That's that's correct. Yes, Fund, funded by by central government, federal government. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, and um, there are um, a number of, of funding sources, but to, to keep it simple, uh, the answer is just yes. Yeah, sure. So, digital twin. Let's just let's just sort of put uh, digital twin sort of in in the broader context of CDBB. Um, did digital twin as an agenda item come? Um, come sort of sometime after the establishment? Was it sort of part of the origination? How does it fit? Because there's a broader scope of CDBB beyond Digital Twin, correct? Yes, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, so um, CDBB existed before the National Digital Twin Program, um, but it made an awful lot of sense for the, uh, the program to sit with CDBB uh, because they already owned the vision for Digital Built Britain and they've described it in terms of design and build and operate and integrate. So I think the design and build part of that is very familiar to us in, in terms of BIM. And I think that there's been a, a really great foundation laid, uh, but we can imagine beyond um, that, that foundation uh, into the operate part of that and, and integrate. So when the programme was suggested, um, and I can maybe just touch on, on where that came from, it, it was just a natural home to sit with CWB. Uh, and we, we found it is it's the right place to be. Mm. But uh, just on, on that background, uh, where it really came from was a report from our National Infrastructure Commission that came out a couple of years ago. It was called Data for the Public Good. Yeah, again, great, it's a great document. It is a good document. I think, it, I think it's really visionary, actually. Uh, but what that recommended um, was three things at a high level. The, the first was that we should move towards having a national digital twin that then we should establish an information management framework to facilitate it. And that then uh, the third, third key recommendation was that we should establish um, a way of pulling together people from across government and industry and academia so that we can align and pull in the same direction to deliver the above. Uh, and that, that's pretty much what the National Digital Twin Program is now, mm -hmm. um, focused around delivering this information management framework. And then that will enable the National Digital Twin and then we're also using the convening power of CDBB and, uh, and various partners uh, to help align the industry and pull in the same direction, basically. Yeah. In, in the digital twin world and among the enthusiasts, uh, certainly here in Australia, um, the, um, uh, the Gemini principles are certainly a, uh, a core reference document, if not the reference document globally at the moment for um for digital twin can you can you share with us uh wh where that started the context and how the principles if they do uh play an ongoing role yeah yeah i'm really glad actually that you, you picked up on the the principles because um um what we see is that this um overall journey uh could could be multi-decade 
multi-generational you know to, to actually build out um, all the value of the national digital twin it's not going to happen overnight mm. uh, and i guess over that time period we can imagine that uh, technology will change potentially technology will change many times you know, and people will come and go uh, and so what we thought right at the beginning of the program was that it was really important to establish the values that would guide the program through its whole life uh, because what we th felt was that uh, those principles and the values uh, are likely to be uh, longer lasting than the than the technology uh, and so what we wanted to establish was effectively the, the conscience of the national digital twin uh, and that we could use those values kind of keep, keep referring back to them uh, on the whole journey kind of carry them with us as it were uh, and and see if we're we're sticking to the values that we we thought of at the beginning um, but having said that, we, we weren't seeing them as being written in tablets of stone so they can mm. never change. Mm. It was more a case of kind of putting it out there as a suggestion that we think these are the values that should inform our journey, uh, but then in, trying to engage with the industry to see if, if those indeed are shared values. Uh, but then uh, as we go on the journey, uh, if we discover more things or we, we, you know, we, we, we learn something that means that we should uh, modify the values, then we can. Um, but like I say, we, we felt that values were important to guide the journey and we, we felt that they were likely to be longer lasting um, than uh, many of the other things. Is there, is, is there a, uh, sorry, let me, let me go back. Um, uh, what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to get from you is uh, an understanding of sort of some general mindsets around digital twin. Um, th there's really a conversation of digital twin that doesn't have BIM involved in some way. Um, this, this idea is, is digital twin sort of BIM 2.0, you know, it's an extrapolation. We know we've now got IOT and we can sort of build a heartbeat of real life data flow kind of in the digital twin. H how, how, is, how is the BIM digital twin kind of relationship? Do they hang out again to, are they still hanging out together? Is is there oh, yeah, very, a good very understanding good. around that? Yeah, 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 very much so. So we kind of see BIM as an essential foundation to even think about digital twins and then beyond that connecting digital twins. And I think uh, one of the things that BIM has taught us is just how important information is. You know, we see that information has value that you need to um, look after it um, through a process. You know, if you if you lose information, you lose value. You know, and BIM has taught us all this and, it, mm. and it's um, helped us to understand what information requirements are uh, and, and effectively it's set a fantastic foundation uh, for us to then grow uh, to see that actually we can use that information beyond the design and build into operate and maintain mm. and the, the use of, of assets. Um, so I would say that BIM was an essential foundation. I mm. you know, I'd, I'd go that, that far. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but we can imagine beyond it. Uh, and you know, so it's, it's it's definitely moving beyond geometry, uh, you know, beyond um, looking at 3D models. And I, and I know that that's not what BIM is just about, but you know, people get into a mindset, don't they? And they think that yeah. that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think if we see information management um, and good information management at the heart of this, um, then we can move beyond that to see the value of information um, through an asset life cycle. Um, and so I think they, the idea of a digital twin being a digital representation of something physical and having a connection to the physical, uh, you can see how you can start to unlock value from that. But then I think crucially beyond that, the idea of being able to connect twins um, then unlocks even more value. And that's the integrate part of the, uh, the vision for Digital Built Britain. Um, and that integration we see as, as being hugely important and really, it's based on shared data. That's the thing that connects twins. Yeah, uh, and yeah. What we have to do to, to get at the value um, is work out a way of, um, in a kind of a secure and resilient way, sharing data across organizational and sector boundaries. Uh, I just want to pick up on, um, you, you, you very sort of um, eloquently sort of dropped into that, that response, um, sort of that core definition of digital twin. Um, you know, digital representation of something physical. Um, you know, I get myself in trouble sometimes when I provocatively sort of say that's just such an unimaginative definition for what digital twin actually can be. You know, like yeah. it, it, it's it's information which is uh, which is um, 
performance, which is transparency, you know, and, and given that we can connect anything to the internet now, um, we can really breathe life into it. And um, uh, whilst I think digital twin, it's got a very interesting history, right? Outside of the built environment, but you know, the built environment is kind of really, you know, giving it a bear hug at the moment. Um, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's a data platform. It's, it's a, it's a data and an information management system, right? So um, I, I, uh, I sometimes struggle with the, with the continued digital representation of a physical thing. I think, Oh my God, yeah. it could be, it, it's so much more, you know, is, is that, uh, is that being too, too idealistic? <laughs> no, no, it's not. I'm not, I'm not. I agree with you. Cause it, cause it, that's a pretty boring way of describing something that is actually really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe we could come up with a form of words that, that works better. And, and actually, there are quite a few of those around the internet. I mean, I guess I guess if we are being boring about just kind of getting down to the basics of what it really is, um, then then maybe we need we need that kind of uh, worthy engineer's definition of what it is. Mm, mm. But but I agree with you that that doesn't kind of light any fires. It doesn't get people excited. Mm. But but I definitely think people should be excited about this because of the value that it, it can bring. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess as well in the that kind of entry level definition of a digital representation of something physical, it kind of misses out on the processes piece of this. So, so um, you, know, you could say that it and it's still maybe boring, but you know it's a digital representation of something that's a value. You know, and that mm. could be assets, processes, and systems. Mm. Uh, but I, th I think the thing that that really makes it a twin uh, is the data connection. It's the connection yeah. between digital and physical. And yeah. that's the bit that unlocks the value. And then I think within the twin, um, you know, it's more than data because, you know, we're doing something clever with the data. Uh, the, the data is essential. Uh, that's kind of the input. But then there's also the code. You know, there's something we're doing clever with that data. Mm. Uh, and you can imagine all sorts of different kind of code engines in there. It could be kind of simulation engines or optimization engines. You can imagine physics-based models, etc. But you know, you're, you're doing something clever with the data to generate mm. insight. Mm. Uh, and so I think that the, the code is another key part of the the twin. Yeah, uh, but then point. I think so also is the visualization piece yeah. because humans need to have a you know, have a look in to see what what the digital twin's doing. Uh, and so that interface between kind of digital and human is really important. Yeah. So I think the, the visualization piece is key to the twin as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, you know, when we break it, break into it, there's a lot of exciting stuff in, in digital twins, but maybe we need some people to give us some exciting words to kind of, you know, capture that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, let's, um, let, let's dig into the digital twin agenda at CDBB. Um, I've, um, uh, I've had sort of connection with a, a couple of the, components um you've got a, a a dt hub digital twin hub so so t tell us about the hub tell us about standards and tell us about some of these key lighthouse projects uh heathrow uh national is it national highways and i think um uh, high speed rail as well which have been uh, sort of these these guinea pigs and sort of real opportunities to, to leverage and learn yeah, yeah, that's that's right. So, so we're we're very excited about the the DT Hub, um, and there's already been a soft launch, so people mm. can already already find out about it uh, on the internet. Uh, but we're due to do um, more of a launch at the end of the month, um, so look out for that. Um, and the, the idea of this this DT Hub, Digital Twin Hub, uh, is that it's a collaborative learning community, uh, because what we were aware of was that a number of people who are starting to develop digital twins in the built environment. Uh, but they didn't want to go it alone. You know, they wanted to learn from what others were, were learning. Uh, and so it's, it's really in those kind of conversations that the DT Hub was born. And, and the idea of it uh, is that it's, it's for practitioners, people who are actually working on digital twins. Um, uh, and, and basically the mantra is um, to learn by doing and mm. progress by sharing. Yeah. Um, so uh, we know that this is an, an early state of the state of the art. Um, and people will learn by doing. So what we're encouraging is is for, for people to do that, but to share their lessons. Yeah. Uh, so the DT Hub is really for sharing lessons. It's it's not for sharing data. You know, we can we can imagine sharing data in the future, but it's principally about sharing lessons. Uh, and so we see that there are two key bits of output that um, we should be working on. 
Um, the first of those uh, is turning experience uh, into best practice, the best practice into guidance and the guidance into standards. Okay. And so the idea is that we grow the standards from the bottom up yeah, uh, yeah. From, from practice. Um, but it makes sense to us that uh, in the early days, you know, the best we can do is, is spot where best practice is happening, identify that it is best practice and share it with others. Yeah. But over a period of time, we see that that would turn into guidance and the guidance potentially turn into standards. Um, so that, that's one, uh, one line of, of development. Uh, and the other one is to do with use cases and, and business cases. So again, starting with experience, uh, we see that if we write up those use cases, the ones which are actually delivering value, you know, that turns into case studies and then the case studies can turn into future business cases for others. Mm -hmm. Because what, what we're finding is that <clears throat> people know that they want to do digital twins, but they, they can't write the business case because they haven't got the examples. Uh, and so we see this uh, collaborative learning community providing those examples for others. Uh, and so uh, you might think it's a bit weird having the business case follow the case study. Yeah, yeah. But the idea is it's a case study of company A feeds into the business case of company B. Um, and so <clears throat> we see in the in the DT hub that really the important thing is the community. So first and foremost, it's a collaborative learning community, but we see that that community can generate content and then we want to share the content. So it's about both um, community and content. Uh, the thing we want people not to think is that the DT hub is a website. Now, yeah. of course, we have a website because everyone has a website yeah, yeah. Uh, and hopefully it'll be a, a very user friendly portal. But actually, the important thing is that it's a community of mm. practitioners. Mm. And, and then we're imagining all sorts of ways that those practitioners can um, interact with other communities like the supplier community, like the academic community. Uh, and we're getting a lot, a lot of interest that, that way. So um, already, I think it's 29 um, different members we have. Uh, and you, you mentioned already some of the kinds of members. Uh, we're, we're largely starting with the large asset owner operators. So the likes of Heathrow Airport and Sellafield, Anglin Water, Highways England, Network Rail, those kind of uh, big asset owner operators, uh, but also cities. And I think that's yeah, okay. really interesting. Yeah, we see cities is really where the digital twins come together. So if we want digital twins to talk to each other. So, for example, a transport digital twin to talk to an energy digital twin you know, where that really matters is in the context of a city. Mm. Uh, and so we we see that um, cities would be really key members of the, of the DT Hub as well, uh, again, to um, learn lessons and share lessons and, and develop standards, as I, as I explained. So, so um, um, you know, this, this actually is properly exciting. This is, this is good stuff. It's, it's on the way. Well, I say it's on the way. It, it's launched already. Yeah, yeah. But, um, we're, we're looking um, as time goes by to open the doors to, uh, to more members. Uh, and we've arranged it that uh, there's certain content that is just open to everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone passing by can, can see the content. Uh, but then we've also got a lobby. We might think of a better word than a lobby. But yeah, you know, yeah. It's a, a place where uh, people have expressed interest and, and they can see some of the kind of the approved content. Uh, but then there's also the kind of the full members who are kind of right in the, in the core of the hub, which is where the real learning and, and the kind of the generation of lessons is, is going on. Um, and what we think is important there is that they they can have sight of the content as it's being being built. You know, the kind of the um, the beta version of the of the content. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd just say look out for that. It, it, it's um, hopefully pretty pretty cool. Yes. So okay. So the hub. Let's just quickly recap. The hub seems to be the engine room. It, it's it's where the, the core activity is. You've got the use cases. You've got the community. Um, out of that business cases get developed standards evolve just on standards can you can you quickly share with us um the role of bsi um we we, we have a standards body over here in australia uh, it's it's not government owned can you tell us this sort of a, a few of the nuances around the the role of bsi uh and and how it fits and who funds what yes yes um so we're really fortunate to have BSI right at the, the core. And, and, and sorry, Philip, there's probably people going, what's BSI? British Standards Institute. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, we're really fortunate to have them right at the core of the, the hub as, uh, as partners. Um, and <clears throat> what we realise is with the, uh, the DT hub being a community, and we're saying that the content's important, 
that basically the community needed to be coordinated uh, and the content needed to be curated. Uh, so we were, were looking for a partner to help us with that. Uh, and, and BSI won that contract. Mm -hmm. uh, so BSI are, are at the centre helping us both with coordination of community and curation of content. Uh, and what, what we've seen uh, in other contexts is it, if it's not managed, then it doesn't kind of happen. So mm -hmm. we felt we needed to put some uh, energy and some investment into, into those two things. Mm -hmm. And that's where BSI are helping. Uh, but you, you can see the, the logic in our thinking here, because uh, what BSI um, are also incredibly well placed to do uh, is help to take best practice and turn it into standards. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, what we're very keen to do is work with them uh, on this agile standard development. Uh, and you know, what we basically mean by that is people can see the beta of the standard before it's released. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's what, that's what's kind of happening within the DT Hub. And we think that you know there isn't a better group to work with on those those agile standard development than BSI. You know, it's 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 kind of who we should go to. Yeah, um, Mark, can I finish by asking uh, some questions or a key question around around governance? Um, it, it certainly seems that the the british government is is fully backing this you know that they 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 they're giving uh they they they're funding uh that they they're giving bsi's role um you know you you have a very clear national context you've got the the um data for social good report that kind of it was kind of like the macro business case right you know d data can yield us this this value to the economy and to to sort of services and outcome. Um, so, um, so having a national host, uh, kind of like a national plan, a national strategy, a national why seems to have been some of the, you know, the real secret source so far for, for, for this really moving forward. Um, as, as you and I have discussed many times, Australia is, it's a little bit of a flip in Australia. We don't have a national host. We don't have a national strategy for digital twin. And indeed I imagine other countries would be like this uh, that might, might watch this this clip are, are there any tips hints uh lessons learned around governance and having a host or not that you would sort of share with us the role of governance um well i think i think uh, as you've rightly highlighted uh, it's a key role because we basically got our marching orders from the national infrastructure commission you know that that report was seminal and, and has, has basically set the direction and we're we're implementing those recommendations uh, but it's really good that um our treasury approved the uh, the recommendations of the national infrastructure commission and effectively that you know that that then meant that we can get on with delivering mm. um i mean in, inevitably covid19 is getting in the way of uh of of uh, the kind of the full plans mm. um, but I think you're absolutely right to point your finger at um, the support of government being being key in this and I you know you're, you're right we've, we've been very fortunate on that yeah. um, and um, I'd probably say say as well that going back to the the early points we said on BIM uh, that in a similar way uh, government provided some really strong support on that and, and guidance uh, and actually so, some of the same characters who, who you know who helped to get BIM established uh, are now helping us mm. uh, to get the National Digital Twin program established so it's really good to have that kind of continuity you know mm. people who really understand it uh, and uh, who can see the value of it and, and then champion it uh, within government uh, and, and then I guess the other key thing on this is starting to get um, cross-departmental um, support because clearly we're talking here about integration uh, across various different sectors. You yeah, know, that's, yeah. that's where the national digital twin goes. Uh, and so it can't just be in one department. It needs to be um, cross departmental. Uh, and we're seeing really good contacts and really good connections there as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of when you, when you point it out, then I realize, you know, how fortunate we are to actually have that. Uh, yeah. you know, it, it's a very good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but also I would say that on the other side, on the industry side, uh, we're seeing um, huge amounts of really good collaboration as well. You know, I mentioned those various different owner operator clients who are working together and sharing. Um, but we've also got people in the supply chain who are kind of pulling together. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's all perfect yet. It's, it's, it's mm. not like that, but you know, there's, there's some good foundations, I think of people working together and collaborating and starting to pull in the same direction. 
Uh, and I should probably also give a shout out for academia in this as well. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. uh, there's some fantastic um, work which is already going on in digital twins and in academia. You know, and it's great to see how there's collaboration there as well. So uh, I think we've got a good foundation, but you know, we've got a lot of a long way to go. And, and uh, what what are some of those next few steps in that sort of that long way to go? What 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 does sort of twenty uh, the rest of twenty twenty look like? Just putting a global pandemic aside for the moment what 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 was the kind of um what is what kind of what is is the plan for sort of the, the next 12 months yeah i mean a key thing is uh it is maintaining the dt hub and the momentum that we've, mm. we've picked up with that because uh, you know it feels like that really has got some good momentum there and there's some great ideas coming up as to how we can develop that so so that, that i would say was a, a real high priority uh, another one though is uh, to to st- be starting work on what we're calling the commons uh, and the, the commons is really kind of some high level standards uh, that we would share in common um, mm-hmm. that would then help to unlock the kind of consistency and quality in data that we need for secure resilient data sharing um, and we see that uh, we need some expert input on that uh, and the idea is and you, know, you talked in, earlier on about the engine room engine room of the of the dt hub and, and rightly so we see it like that um, but we also see the commons connection with that as being key. So as we develop these kind of semantic type solutions, like your know, ontologies and taxonomies, they, they need to be validated and that you know, no better place to do that than the DT hub. So what we want to do um, in the coming year is uh, start off that work on the commons uh, and start validating it in, in the DT hub. Yeah. Um, and I think it's the connection between those two that ends up being key. You know, it, it effectively, it's a connection between the practitioner community and the expert community. And they, they need each other. Mm. And if we only had one and not the other, uh, they could go wrong in different ways. So um, next year, or sorry, this coming financial year, really keen to progress with the commons. And then there's a, a third key plank of, of what we want to do, which is around um, our change stream. Uh, because we don't want to do this stuff with a DT Hub and Commons in a corner, yeah. uh, because the, the industry needs to know what's coming, uh, and therefore we need to engage with the, the wider industry. Now, they might not be ready for change just now, but if that change is coming in five, five years' time or three years' time or whenever, um, we, you know, we need to start the process of engagement. And so our, our change stream, we think, is really important to actually facilitate and help the alignment across the industry. Um, so those those three things are our our key focus. Uh, DT Hub, I've explained that in some detail. Commons and change. Yeah, Mark, that's been a brilliant overview. Um, we're we're going to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us and sharing uh, that update with our Digital Twin Task Force members and our broader network. Um, certainly looking forward to sharing what we can, um, you know, b- back to you uh, in uh, in the coming months and, and onwards. And uh, hopefully look forward to seeing you at some point when things sort of calm down with everything that's happening in the world. Hopefully see you in Australia and uh, share, share our hospitality and, uh, of course, share our digital twin insights. That would be absolutely brilliant. And, and I'm, I'm really grateful to you, Adam, to make the connection because, you know, I think this kind of thing is, is really good. Um, mm. You know, obviously I believe in, in the, the learning by doing and progress by sharing. So, you know, I, th- I think we can do that. Uh, so it's fantastic to be kind of connected to your community. And, you know, I really appreciate it. Thanks. No, I look forward to more of it. Thanks so much, Mark. Okay, my pleasure. Okay. Cheers.